All right, uh, welcome back. We are here for another section. And shouldn't have started recording so early, but this is section 7.2. And either my computer's slow or here we go. All right. Um, 7.2 is on addition and subtraction formulas. This is where it gets real. Um, there's a really nice uh, set of sort of chants that you can do to help you memorize these guys. Um, Okay. Um, right, so this section just goes through, um, you know, what you, can, what you can say about if you know two angles that add to another one. For example, what if I said, hey, find me the sign of Let's go with like 75 degrees. Could you tell me the exact value of that? Right off the top of your head, maybe not. But with a little bit of work, you could, because it turns out there's this nice, going off of last time, identity about angle sums. And it just so happens that this is 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. So today we're gonna look at using this identity, which is the addition identity for two angles or the subtraction identity, which is the subtraction. Um, and it's a really nice formula, which says that if you've got a sum in a sign, if you've got a sum of two angles, the sign of that sum is equal to the sign of the first angle times the cosine, that is a C, <laughs> of the second angle. Plus, oh boy. Plus uh, cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Okay, and these things we know, sine of 30 is one half, cosine of 45 is root two over two, cosine of 30 is root three over two, sine of 45 is root two over two. So now this problem of finding the sine of some net angle, which is not common at all, uh, boils down to just finding sines and cosines of common angles. And a big part of this section is actually going about proving these angle sum identities. Um, and I will let you read the book and watch the proofs in the book of these things. Um, I'm just going to throw these at you and we are going to do some problems like what I just did here, uh, sort of give you a handle for how to use them. Um, and hopefully that'll be okay. If not, on Wednesday, you can ask and we will go through that. So here we go. There's a nice little chant that goes along with this. So I'm gonna take S and T to be angles. Uh, that's what your book does. Um, you could use X and Y, you could use theta and phi, it doesn't matter, but here's the chant. Sine is sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And the order of the angle stays the same. So sine of S times cosine of T plus cosine of S times sine of T. So if you keep the angles in the same order, you have this nice little, nice little uh, chant that you can say with it. And cosine is very similar. It is cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. 
the angle order stays the same again, cosine of s times cosine of t minus sine of s times sine of t. So here's the total chant. This is how I, I learned them way back in the day. I like to write first, I like to write on the left this, sine of s plus t, cosine of s plus t. And then I like to say what I see on the right, not the stuff on the left. And it's, it's pretty syncopated. So here we go. So sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. Okay, now the sine is this plus. The first sign, that's an S-I-G-N. The other ones are S-I-N-E. And I say sine because it needs to be the opposite of this one. I don't say it up here because it's the same as that one. So sine of a sum is a sum of these products. Cosine of a sum is a difference of these products. Similarly, if I make this a negative sign, so I take S minus T, this turns into a minus sign here. If I turn this bottom one into a negative sign, then this one here turns into a plus sign which means in this previous example, sine of 75, I might, as, I might as well have just done sine of like 15. And that you could also compute using these formulas. Because what do we have here? We've got now a difference and we have Uh, this is sine of 45 minus 30, isn't it? That's what 15 is equal to. So, well, what does our formula say? Well, that's the same as sine of 45 times cosine of 30. Now minus, because we have a minus sign there, and that's what this formula says. If the minus sign is in between the angles here and sine, then we have a minus sign in between our products. So this is minus cosine of 45 times sine of 30. The angles keep their order 45 first, 30 second. And this is something that, again, we can just do. And what does it turn into? Well, it's pretty close to what we have up here. It's root three over two for cosine 30, root two over two for 45 in both cases. That's a two, not a three. And this is a one half. Okay, so this illustrates uh, exactly how you would use these. Um, your book lists these on all separate lines, um, sine of S plus T and then sine of S minus T. I like to use this plus and minus notation uh, the top signs are always paired together. The bottom signs are always paired together. I like to use the plus minus and the minus plus signs in the cosine one to say the top signs are paired together plus with minus or the bottom signs minus with plus. Um, it's just a bit more succinct. It takes less writing. And when I'm writing on this laptop, that makes all the difference. <laughs> so the hard ones then would be the tangent formulas. Um, and, and they're less obvious. I don't have a nice little chant or cheer to say for them. Um, you use them in the exact same way. And uh, can I write these separately? Yes, I can. So I'm gonna write them, I mean, individually. Uh, I can write them together is what I mean. So if you have tangent of two angles added together, you can write it like this. Tangent of the first plus tangent of the second divided by one minus the product, okay? Um, the order of the angle stays the same, just like we had before. So that doesn't change. It's the tangent of the first plus the tangent of the second over one minus the tangent of the first times the tangent of the second. So there's a plus sign on top there's a minus sign here on bottom. 
Now, if you have a difference of angles for tangents, so tangent of S minus T, what changes? The top sign changes to a minus, and then on the bottom, it changes to a plus. So these tangent sum and tangent difference identities, you'll only ever have them with all the blue signs. So plus, plus, and minus, or you'll have it with the red signs. So the minus, the minus, and the plus. And you use them in the exact same way that we used them before. So if I said, what is tangent 75? Well, you'd say 75 is 40 and 30, there's 45 and 30. Um, and you would plug in the angles and the correct values. And then because you know those commonly known ones, uh, you won't have any problem finding them. Um, right, and those, those are the exact examples actually. Now that I'm looking through here um, that your book uses. Yeah, and your book also goes into proving identities from these, from these things. So it's important to note that in the previous, uh, in the previous um, section where we were proving that the left-hand side of some trig expression is equal to some right-hand side trig expression, these are now tools in your toolbox. And they are complicated tools in your toolbox, but you can use them. And they are uh, really, really handy for that. So let me write them out. Um, um, they're really nice tools for, for simplifying certain things down. They don't, they might not look like they're going to be changing much or simplifying much, but if you know extra information about the angles, it can be really handy. Uh, so, for example, if you know that one of these angles is 90, then remember that cosine of 90 is zero. So the whole, the whole first uh, product in the sine one cancels out, and the whole product in the second one cancels out in the, in the, you know, the bottom one, too, there. So remember that uh, if one of your angles is like a multiple of 90, then either sine or cosine is, is zero, and that's really helpful. Uh, and if you remember the co-function identities, sine and cosine, they're shifts of 90 degrees of each other. So if you're working with simplifying something that has like a 90 minus in it, you're working with co-function identities, well, these, these will greatly simplify things. Other things to note would be what if <clears throat> these two angles are the exact same, right? What if you have sine of two times some angle? Well, then it's sine of S times cosine of S plus cosine of S times sine of S which means sine of twice an angle is equal to twice the sine of the angle times the cosine of the angle. That's called the double angle identity. What about cosine? Cosine of twice some angle. Well, then we have cosine of the angle times cosine, that's cosine squared, right? Minus sine S times cosine S, that's sine squared. So cosine squared of S minus sine squared of S. That's pretty nice. Because these guys can be simplified by the Pythagorean theorem quite a lot. Remember that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared, right? So we can rewrite this one in a couple different ways, but we'll just write it here, removing the sine squared. We've got cosine squared of our angle S minus one minus cosine squared of S. Okay, if you distribute now the, the negative sign, what does that give you? It gives you equals two cosine squared of S minus one. Okay, so cosine of twice an angle is equal to twice the square of the cosine of that angle minus one. That's also very, very handy. 
Um, usually this is written the other way around. Cosine squared of s is equal to cosine of 2s plus 1 divided by 2. Um, the reason that's usually written the other way is because when you get into calculus, uh, you'll find that you'll be integrating things like cosine squareds and sine squareds from time to time. And it is very easy to, uh, to integrate things, take the integral of uh, things to the first power. It's not as easy to take things, uh, integrals of things to higher powers. So you have to use uh, have to use certain things for that. And this angle identity is one of those things. You can reduce the power down all the way to one if you do this successively. And then it's an easy integral. So with that, uh, I'm pretty sure we're done with this uh, section. Um, yeah, there, there's just, there's a lot of this, there's a lot of applications of these angle sums. And I guess we'll get into that here on Wednesday, um, but that is it for now. Okay, so we've added a few more identities from these angle sums and, and differences. And then we've looked at this double angle identity. And we could also look at a half angle identity, um, but we'll, we'll save that perhaps for another time. I don't see it here in this section. Yep, and that's it. So I hope that helps and I will see you next time on Wednesday. Until then, take it easy, okay?